The goal of a tricker is to combine kicks, flips, and twists in the most impressive way possible. A tricking battle pits two athletes head to head with one clear objective. Impress the judging panel more than the other guy. But what we're going to talk about today is no ordinary tricking battle. Join me as we explore what really happened and why this might just be tricking's greatest battle. Johan has landed countless world's firsts and currently holds the record for the most consecutive corks and double corks done in a row. With a whole lot of competition wins under his belt, he could easily be considered the most accomplished battle tricker in the history of tricking. Hey, you want this thing? At the vast majority of tricking events I've been to, Johan's won the battles with relative ease. And to this day, there's still only a handful of athletes who are even in with a shot of beating his incredibly consistent power-based style. And whilst his tricks speak for themselves, I think what's most impressive about Johan is how he got those tricks. Did you ever take any formal <coughs> gymnastics classes or any martial no, arts classes? No. So everything I just own, like, I just learned my on my own. Wow! And yeah. when you were first learning uh, these flips and stuff, were you training inside of a gym or be training outside? Outside, yeah. Uh, Mostly um, on grass and concrete. What separates Johan from other athletes that dominate the sport is that he did it mostly on grass and concrete. And being from Finland, a lot of the time, that grass wasn't dry. I've been tricking for over a decade now, and I honestly can't stress enough how rare this is. Almost any other tricker in with a chance of winning a major event has been blessed with fantastic access to training facilities. Despite this disadvantage, in 2015, just a couple of days after getting out of hospital due to a major allergic reaction, Johan went on to win first place at Hooked, which is one of the biggest tricking competitions in the world. if not the biggest. In the following two years, Johan went on to continuously push the boundaries of tricking, but was unable to claim another hooked victory. Though in 2018, Johan looked ready to reclaim his crown but it wasn't going to be easy. Nowadays, you can't have a discussion about who the best tricker in the world is without mentioning Shosei. He leads the sport in a number of areas with a list, as long as my arm, of tricks that only he can do. Though at the start of 2018, this really wasn't the case. Shosei began tricking back in 2014 at the age of 9 with his coach Taichi at the legendary Tundra Tricking Gym. Rumour has it that Taichi's reason for starting the gym was the talent he saw in Shosei. Now I don't know if that's 100% true, but it definitely worked out for both of them. Having become the youngest person to land a number of things at the age of 12 in the previous year, Shosei began landing his own world's first in 2018. Proving to be a worthy adversary for even the best trickers, In the months leading up to this event, Shosei was getting a lot of attention and he seemed like a real contender in with a chance of winning. 
Although he was performing at an incredible level that saw him coast through the competition, making it all the way to the final, there was little he could do to compete against Johan. At the time, this was the hardest swing through combo anyone had ever done in a battle. And it was something only Johan was capable of. Shosei just couldn't compete. Two weeks later, at just 13 years old, Shosei became the Japanese tricking champion. But once again, he met his match in the world division and couldn't quite keep up with Johan's Finnish might. With the biggest event of the year coming up in just three months, would Shosei really be able to take on Johan? Well, it turns out, a lot can happen in three months. Just from what happened the day before the competition, we all knew we were in for a show. Shosei steamrolled his way to the final, winning every single round. Despite coming up against two former hooked champions. Whilst Johan actually dropped a round in the semi-finals against Reggie Takahashi to this insane combo. But after winning every event leading up to this, that wasn't going to stop him. There was truly no way to tell which way this was going to go. Both athletes were operating on a power level that hadn't really been seen in the competition before. With both athletes having hit world's firsts the previous day, everyone was on the edge of their seat, waiting to see what was about to go down. This was actually a pretty controversial call that we go more into in the full version of this video on Kojiro's Trick Lab. Now back to the battle.
stay in the competition, Johan has to win this next round. Both trickers have performed four high-level power combos in the space of about five minutes after a whole night of competing. It all comes down to this last pass. For the first time, Shosei can prove himself as tricking champion of the world. And Johan can complete his win streak and finally reclaim his crown as hooked champion. Shosei chose an incredibly advanced combo to quad for. To guarantee the win, Johan would have to do something spectacular. But everyone in the room knows he's capable of just that. I was going to ask you, of all the battles you've had, what's your hardest battle to date? Do you have one that stands out as the hardest one? I think it's 2018. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Is there someone that was your hardest person to battle against? Any to any gathering, any battle. Don't don't know about that one. Johan and Zenis. Okay. So hooked, Johan. Now, if you were to ever battle Shosei again, do you have a plan? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching what I think is Tricking's greatest battle, and a special thank you to the athletes that made this possible. I first saw Johan at a Finnish event back in 2014. He wasn't spectacular at the time, but he really stood out to me as he just tried stuff again and again and again. I'd never seen anything quite like it. Johan would do the most tricks out of every single person every day of the gathering. In the following years, I saw him progress at an incredible rate, training mostly on wooden floors, wet grass and concrete. Uh, I was struggling uh, a lot with okay. tricks. Yeah, like I didn't learn it all like very easy wow. because I didn't have like any spring floors or something. And how many hours per day were you training? Like four or five or no, something. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Like three, I actually had like three sessions in one day. 
He's one of the few trickers I've seen get incredibly good, largely by virtue of his passion, mindset, and work ethic, rather than being shaped by his training environment. And I think that's just as impressive as the tricks themselves. And that's not to diminish the achievements of Shosei. He's truly maximized the opportunity he's had, and he's remained humble whilst doing it. Is there anything that you think has led to your success? Is it training every day, or is it your coaching, or do you think it's just you're very passionate about it? Uh, he thinks it's because he was nurtured in a really good environment. And how long have you been training with uh, Tai Chi for? Since the very beginning. Massive respect to both of these guys. I mention this because Johan's story and stories like Johan's are one of my biggest motivators behind Kodra's Trick Lab. I always tried to get as good as I could, but didn't really have any kind of coaching or help in how to do that. So despite trying my absolute best and training pretty much every day for a long period of time, I didn't get anywhere near as good as I would have if I'd had the right information available to me. Kojo's Trick Lab's goal is to make that information available to everyone at an affordable price. So check out what we've been working on for the last three and a half years if you're interested. It's what I dedicate my life to. I think it will help you. Maybe try it out. If not, subscribe anyway. Big thank you to anyone whose content I used in this project and a special thank you to the Jamcast for putting together these interviews with some of the best tricking athletes in the world. It's a great service for the community and I've left links to everything that I've used in the description. So if you wanna learn more about hooked gathering, see full versions of these interviews or just find out more about the world of tricking, then check out some of those links. You're in for a good time. If you disagree with me about everything, let me know in the comments. Let me know what the real greatest battle of all time is. I'll check them out. This is just my opinion. You're welcome to your own. I'll see you next time.